Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today is March 17, 2019. I'm your host, Mike, back at it again with another episode of the Truth to Power Show. And uh, this episode, like all episodes, should be a very, very special one. Very special, not only because it's St. Patrick's Day, but because I wanted to shed some light on you know, a little background into that whole. Really, it's just about Scotland. But anyway, uh, growing up, you know, I have a very Scotch Irish last name, Mick. Anybody that, you know, anybody I always encountered always been like, oh, wow, you know, your last name obviously came from Slave Master. Like, where you, you know, that's the automatic assumption always is that the majority of these quote unquote African American black people in the world have, uh, you know, they get these names from slavers or slave masters. But anybody that knows true history knows that the people that came here from Scotland didn't really have, for the most part, that much resources to own slaves. And they themselves were slaves. Many of them were indentured servants. Many of them were slaves. Ended up getting sold into slavery, Barbados, America, and so forth. So I really want to shed some light on that just because one of the things, I, it's actually just perfect timing, actually. I mean, it's been on the tip, tip of my tongue. And uh, every time I encounter people, like I said, they always just say, hey, oh, wow, you know, your name came from a slave master. But I would like to. I would like to, you know, enter some new information, just, you know, get people to think. So what we have here, Memoirs of the Secret Service of John Mackey. If you see an F, this little F, by the way, is supposed to be an S. So whenever you see it, it's, it's uh, pronounced an S. Anyways, so what we have here, this this John Mackey guy, he was born, I got his Wikipedia page up. Shit, he died 1726. So, you know, the man was reporting on information in the 60s. In the late 1600s, and he was a Scottish spy. He was reporting back. Uh, he was reporting back to uh, to his folks, and basically reporting on what, was, what he was seeing. And he basically the whole thing of this is that he gave descriptions of people of that time, the nobility of that time, what was going on. You know, we have a, the true secret history of the rise, promotions, and the English and Scots nobility, officers, civil marines. So this is a white man, just to say, you know, because I know if the black person says that y'all don't believe it, this is a white man, this is them folks, your favorite people, co of this. So, basically, he wrote down in his book, he wrote down a list of, like, descriptions of who these people are, like, how they live, information about just their personalities and, and things like that. And what I find interesting is when you go into it, many of these people have descriptions of being quote unquote black, brown, swarthy. Swarthy is what, you know, we're gonna get into the definition of swarthy, sanguine. I have a cousin who is a sanguine, perfect example, you know, many different shades of black. Anyway, so this document from the 1700s, early 1700s, we have Charles Lemos, Duke of Richmond. So it says, is son to King Charles II by Duchess of Portmouth. He was carried by his mother into France in the reign of King James and left France in the reign of King Williams when he declared himself a region and constitution of his country. This is the good part. He is a gentleman, good natured to a fault, very well bred, and hath many valuable things in him. Is an enemy to business, very credulous, well shaped, black complexion. Much like King Charles, not 30 years old. What the hell is that? This this man, by the way, the picture next to him, as you can read, is the portrait that we get today, and is told that this is how this man looked. We're gonna ignore the fact that this man's description from a person living in that time, a person seeing that man with his own eyes, described this man as a black complexion. The person we're looking at doesn't look much like a person with a black complexion. So I know you could say, hey, that must be a one-off. That must be, you know, that must be a one-off. I, I, you know, let me not say I wish it was. Go further. We got <clears throat> John Lord Summers, late Lord Chancellor. This man is being described as he is a grave. He is of a grave deportment, easy and free in conversations. 
Something of a libertine of middle stature, brown complexion, nearly 50 years old. This man doesn't look like, doesn't look like a brown complexion. So this man lived from 1651 to 17, 1760. Black John Summers. I, I mean, but if I if a person comes today and their last name is Summers and it's not anything African, what's the automatic assumption? Did this man get his name from a slave? A slave master? Let's move further. Here we have Daniel, Earl of Nottingham, Secretary of State. Daniel, Earl of Nottingham, Secretary of State, part of Great Britain. We're going to go into his description. He has also the exterior air of business. An application enough to make him very capable. In his habit and manner, very formal. A tall, thin, very black man. Like a Spaniard or Jew? Spaniard or Jew? Jew? Black like a Jew? Right, let, me not, let me not get into it. What is this? We have more? Charles, Duke of Somerset? Master of the Horse? Described here, he is a middle stature, very, I'm sorry, he is a middle stature, well shaped, a very black complexion. We have John Duke of Buckinghamshire, what is he, of a brown complexion. Charles Duke of St. Albans here, he is, a, he is of a black complexion, not, not too tall as the Duke of North Northumberland, yet very like King Charles. He's a black complexion. Oh, wow, black and Charles. Why do they keep? Why do they keep referencing King Charles as being black? By the way, why do they keep referencing King Charles' blackness? Anyways, Charles Fitzroy, a tall black man, about 25 years. What the hell, Duke of Preston? Fitzroy. So if your last name is Fitzroy, did this man? Did this? Did this nobleman get his name from? Duke, this Duke got his name from a slave master? How's that? Oh, well. Then we have Earl of Kingston. What? 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 Let's see. Of the name and family and peer points, has very good estate, is very fine gentleman, of good sense, well bred, and lover of the ladies. Sound like a brother. Entirely in the interest of his country, makes a good figure. Is of a black complexion, well made, not 40 years old. All right. This is just, this is wild. I mean, we have Thomas Tufton being described here. What is this saying? Affair, preservative, the monarchy, the church, a thin, tall, black, red faced man. Shit, I got a cousin Akeem who's black, but his face red. What does that mean? Shout out to Akeem. We got Ed. Edward Montague, Earl of Sandwich. Tall, thin, black man, about 35 years old. I mean, Richard Earl of... What is that? Richard Earl of Ranelaw? I can't even say that. He's a very fat, black, and turned of six... What is that? Uh, 60 years old. I mean, this, this is just... This, what is this? I mean, this is why I have an issue, fam. This is why we have to get into what real history is. And recent people tell you all the time, "Oh, they're hiding our history. It's not important." I, I will share. I'm sorry. They say it's, they're hiding our history, but then when we say, "Hey, this is our," then you know, some people are doing the research and trying to bring that real history to to the forefront. You know, reclaim back our our history. They'll say that's not important. Forget it. What use is it? Get this bread. Like, no, we, we got to get the bread and also get the culture, get the history back, figure out what happened. And this is a big part of what happened. Man. A lot of, we got Murphys and all kinds of people in the world today with Scottish names being told that they got their name from slavery. But we're reading, we're reading these descriptions. We got Earl of Feverham being described here as a middle statured brown man. We got George Lord of Abernathy. Shit, how you say that? Abernathy. Is a little brown man. I mean, this, this is just this. This is very interesting, and and I just wanted to bring this up because it was like I said, it was perfect. It was we got we got St. Patrick's Day, Ireland, Scotland. They got that connection. They right there. Uh, shoot, they got a new uh, research allegedly. St. Patrick was born in Scotland. They say so. Hey, uh, who knows? Anyway, what we got here, uh, Mr. Mr. Methune, ambassador to the King of Portugal. He is a man of intrigue, but very muddy in his conceptions, and not quickly understood in anything. 
In his complexion and manners, much of a Spaniard, a tall black man, 50 years old. Uh-huh. Ambassador to the King of Portugal is a tall black man, 50 years old. Uh -huh. We got uh, Mr. Stanhope here being described, and the son of a handsome black man. We got Earl of... I mean, we gotta get the point here. Now we're getting into the nobility of Scotland, so... You know, we got Marquise. You know, we, we, that we consider a ghetto name, right? We got Marquise considered a ghetto name today. They'll, they'll shit on you if your name is Marquise. Well, we got a Marquise from the 1700s being described here with a very black complexion. I mean, what? What's the explanation? How do they explain, how do they explain this away, fam? This is the history that they're hiding from us. And I just want like, we got another Marquis, Marquis of Tweedale, a short brown man, towards 50 years old. Shoot. Earl of Melfort. I got a cousin whose middle name is Melfort. He would, where we get that name from? They would say, slavery, got it from the white man. Yet again, we have this man being described here. He is tall, black, stoops in the shoulders, thin and turned 50 years old. Earl of Melford, tall, black. Yeah, I mean, this is just so many. We got James, Duke of Hamilton. So we got James Hamilton here. I mean, I got a lot of homies last name. Hamilton, y'all gotta, gotta check this out, bro. What did they tell you? You got your name from a slave. Slave master, slavery, that's all you ever were. Yeah, here go your ancestor right here, King. Being described here of a man of quality, of easy excess. Then of a black complexion, turned 45 years old. We got these fake pictures, you know. Allegedly, James Hamilton. It doesn't match the descriptions. And most of these pictures are always not, you know, contemporary. They're always made after the fact, for whatever reason. We know a reason. Ah, let's see, let's see. Earl of Middleton again. He is a he is a black man of middle stature with a sanguine complexion. Sanguine. I told you guys we'll get to the definition of that, and I will not forget. Earl of Denning Denning Bay. Very black and turned 40 years old. I mean, we got Earl, Earl of Errol. Errol? Out of Belizean cat's name, Errol. He is of brown complexion. I mean, we kind of get the point at this point. So. I'm gonna leave the link in to where you guys could really dig into this because the right here there's two there's basically a British and Scottish version of these biographies where if you really want to you can dig into uh, this is like uh, this document's from the 1800s the Scottish one I believe is earlier than that so you can uh, you can get big, dig into these different biographies and these are just a few of the ones that I mentioned like there's they go further than this. They go, there's, a, there's hundreds of descriptions of black people. So you might find your ancestors in these things. You never know. And it, I'm even leave the uh, link for the description for this uh, website too. It's a really good website. It uh, really exposes true history. And um, again, just to help people out because me out this. The description, they also leave a description here. So, of like the, basically what to look for. So, you have to know how to find your people in history. You're not going to necessarily always find people described as black. You're not always going to find a black person in the 1700s. Your people were described as Moors, uh, black of Moors. Your people were described as Berbers. There's a lot of different ways that quote unquote black people were described throughout the throughout history throughout time so we gotta figure find out the ways that we're described and find ourselves in history and that's the best way we can start to piece together the history anyway so we see here swarthy dark complexion black swarthiness dark darkness complexion swart so any basically swar swarthy is dark color so that's what you'll see that's the the other option for when you don't see black when you see swarthy that also means your folks uh, hold up. i didn't want to get to this yet tawny darkly brown tawny another thing olive changed so another thing is that olive uh when you're olive skin to change from dark skin to what you see now is that more mediterranean look um it never made sense to me because whenever i looked at olives i was like yeah that doesn't look like that color but whatever they changed it finessed it through time but 
back in those times it meant something different anyways another thing I found interesting was this uh, description we have of Queen Elizabeth it says uh, Elizabeth was 25 years old at her accession she was tall and very slender with a tiny waist small bosom and beautiful long fingered hands which is pleased which pleased her vanity to display to advantage in a variety of affected poses she had a swarthy olive complexion like that of her mother also she made a habit of whitening it with lotion made up of egg whites so we already know that swarthy at the very least if they even try to finesse swarthy means like you know, you know color and she's trying to whiten it just something to think about something to think about so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close out with this uh, like I said I'm gonna leave the links in the description I definitely hope you guys uh, find interest in this and try to seek your own history the way I'm trying to seek my history that way we could redefine the whole slavery narrative we don't have to say yes yes you know what it's looking like you know we got this whole 30 year war thing looks like we lost the war got kicked out of Scotland and uh we go i'm probably gonna try to put together a whole presentation to make that make sense but you know yeah we lost the war kicked out indentured servery has to link with barbados has to do with the islands and americas and indentured servants a whole bunch of different things so we'll get into it but uh just wanted to spark that conversation uh, you guys have a great rest of your day peace